All right, I'm Andrew Grillos, and I'm going to tie my most popular fly right now. Uh, this is the Hippie Stomper. This guy is available from Umpqua Feather Merchants. Oh man, in size 8 through 18, a whole bunch of different colors. Uh, I'm going to tie a pink one today. I've got this blue one in here for another example of one of my favorite colors. So let's pop this guy out and get after it. The hook that I like to tie this fly on is a Tiemco 3761. This is a, kind of a nymph hook, I guess. It's 1 or 2x heavy and I think 2 or 3x long. Uh, that slightly heavier wire hook lets you pull on fish a little bit harder because personally I like to fish the heaviest tippet that I possibly can. And uh, it acts as a keel as well, having a little bit more weight coming off the bottom of the fly. So the first thing I like to do with just about every fly I tie is lay down a nice tight thread base. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm going to take that thread back to about where the barb of the hook is at there. My next step is to tie in a tail. This is moose body hair. I'm going to grab a little chunk of it, maybe one-third to one-half the diameter of a pencil. I want to clean the little fuzzy fibers out of it and then stack it with your hair stacker. Throw that in the stacker. Sometimes I'll just tap it on my knuckle like that works pretty well. Not quite as loud and aggravating as banging on the desk. Alright, so as you can see, now those tips are nice and straight there. I'm going to get this tail for the fly about equal to my hook length. Between the hook shank and the overall hook length is pretty good for this one. So I'm, I like where that's at in my fingers. I'm going to drop it right there and then switch the hands that are holding that one or two kind of softer to moderate tension wraps just to secure it in place. Kind of make sure that I like where it's at there. Looks good. And apply a little more tension and I'm going to bury these fibers all the way up to the midpoint of the hook shank. This is going to form a uniform diameter underbody that will wrap our flash taboo over in a few more steps. That's pretty good. So I'm going to cut that guy off nice and close there. Go ahead and make a few more wraps just to hide those butt ends. And then let's advance our thread backwards to the end of that tail where we tied it in right there. Next step is our one millimeter black foam overbody. This is about equal to one hook gap width. I'm going to just tie it in right near the end there. Don't go to full tension right away, just kind of moderate thread tension, make sure it's positioned where you like, one or two more wraps around it, and then you can apply a little bit more tension on it. About like that, just kind of bury that tie in there, the little tag end of it. The next step is the, uh, the color for the fly, another layer of one millimeter foam. We're doing a pink one here, so this is going to be our pink under, under layer of foam. Oop, missed it there. You don't want that thread underbody to show through there, so I just wrap it so I'm confident that the thread wraps are not going to show. Looks pretty good. A couple more wraps there. Looks great. So at this point, we've got our two foam layers in there. I'm going to advance my thread to about the midpoint of my hook shank now. About, yeah, right about there looks pretty good to me. And I'm going to take two strands of holographic flashaboo and double this over my thread. So there's one, there's two. Just line up the ends of it, about like that. And then take and double this over your thread. That makes for a more durable fly instead of just tying it in by the ends. And then you can just take and flip it right up onto the top of the fly like that. Take maybe one, two, three little wraps there. And then let's wrap this back to the foam, and then we're going to come back to the tie-in point. So this will form that sparkly underbody. I don't want that black thread underbody to show at all, so I'm just going to try to carefully wrap this all the way until it butts up against the tail. About like that, and then take and wrap this all the way back. And I've tied on a rotary vise for about 20-25 years, so I'd like to take advantage of that whenever I can. 
as you see there. I'm going to undo the wraps that I just put in there with my rotary vise. That's pretty good for our underbody. So now I'll take a wrap and secure that flashaboo. One more, and a third, and a fourth. That should be sufficient. Go ahead and cut that. Making some good progress here. I'm going to pull that pink foam layer over the top there. One wrap. Don't start with maximum tension, otherwise you might cut right through your foam. Just check the position on that. That's good. One or two more wraps with a little more tension. Pull the black layer over the top of the pink there. Looks good. Okay, you can kind of twist it still at this point and get everything lined up how you want it. I'm going to advance my thread to the right hand side of the hook shank. Don't go right up against the eye, leave yourself a little room to finish the fly off when you're all done. And at this point I'm going to take a couple wraps, it's going to create kind of a segment in there that we're actually going to bury in a moment. We're going to hide that under a bunch of thread wraps. Great, so there's the segment that we just created. You can position everything, give it a little twist if you're not happy with how straight it is. And now we're going to bury those two layers of foam in there because we're going to wrap our hackle right over that spot. And that tends to twist it so you can just correct it like I just did there. Make sure everything lines up how you want it to. Straighten it a bit more if you need. This is white McFlylon. It's a super buoyant poly yarn. That's what I like to use for the wing on the hippie stomper. I'm going to lay this right on top of that that mid, midpoint there. Looks good. Then I'm going to tie this down all the way up at the front here as well. About like that. And then a few wraps just to kind of secure it in the middle. Next step are our fine barred round rubber legs. These little black and white guys. I'm going to tie them in on either side of the hook. One on my side. Take and secure this the full length of that segment that we've got going there. The hackle's going to get all wrapped in between there in a moment. Alright, so you can see there I've kind of secured that to that side. Now I'm just going to do the same thing on the opposite side of the fly. Double these over your thread as well. Just like I was saying with that flashaboo, it makes for a more durable fly. Pretty good. Now we'll just tie this down along that side of the of the fly. Great. Next step is to tie our hackle in. This is a I think a whiting silver grade uh, cape. Super nice. Ton of barbs. Really good. Good for this fly. I like this to be a very heavily hackled fly as much as you can get in there. So these high barb counts of these whiting feathers are pretty tough to beat. A little tip there too, you'll see, I don't like to strip those barbs off, I like to snip them like that. That Those little uh, butts that are left on there, that gives you just a little bit more that your thread can grab a hold of. I'm just going to tie that right on top. A few wraps to make sure it's nice and secure. Good, and then leave your thread right up here next to where you tied the legs up to the front there. Let's wrap our hackle now. Get as many wraps as you can in there. Oop, I don't like that gap that I've got going there. It's a little better. And again, I like to take advantage of my rotary vise in situations like this. I can see how my hackle's going in a little bit better. Just make sure to get it wrapped in there nice and dense. The more wraps you can get, the more buoyant of a fly you'll have. Undo a couple of wraps that I just put in there. And this feather is starting to get small, so I'm going to grab a hold of it with my hackle pliers for my last wrap or two, just so I don't run the risk of dropping it and having to do it all over again. Looks pretty good. All right, so we've tied off our hackle feather there. I've got about three wraps going kind of between the hackle and the wing. Uh, at this point, we can pull everything back and out of the way. 
Just kind of use your fingers to grab a hold of everything. Advance your thread in front of all that stuff. Try to get two or three good wraps in there. That'll just lay a good little foundation for your head. We're going to whip finish this guy in there. You don't need to make multiple whip finishes with a bunch of wraps if you can just get a good two to probably a good three to four turn whip finish in there. So it pays off to put a little extra effort into doing a good whip finish. Alright, we've got that guy done. Now I'm going to cut my thread and then it's just a matter of trimming a few things. And then the, the hippie stomper is all ready to go. So the first thing I'm going to trim is the foam coming out the front of the fly here. I want to leave a bit of a lip on the front there. That, that little head, I like the shape of that for one, but what that also does is that encourages the fly to stay on the surface. I tie this on a down eye hook for a reason. With that down eye hook, if you apply a little tension to the fly, if you were to mend or twitch it or something, that causes the orientation of the fly to want to actually stay on the surface as opposed to diving if it were on an up eye hook. The next thing that I'm going to trim will be that wing coming out the front side here. I want that to be about the same length, if not just a little bit longer than my hackle. So we'll go right about there, kind of fluff it out just a bit. The back portion of this wing, I like to trim to about the midpoint of the back of the fly. So you'll see about like that. Next thing I like to do here, I've got the hackle feather still. We'll give that guy a little clip. Just kind of carefully wiggle your scissors in there, one little snip, and get that out of there. I like to cut the hackle flush on the underside of this fly. That encourages the fly to ride with the wing up and the hook point down almost every time. So I'll just work my feather or work my uh, work my scissors right into the hackle there. Take one snip, blow those fibers out of the way. Probably takes a couple more snips to get it nice and flat. How's that look? That looks pretty good, I like that. And then the last step here is to trim the length of the legs. So I want the legs to be, oh, about equal to the body length, maybe a little bit longer than that, just for a, a reference. I'll show you there. So that's my side, I like that length on that guy. One thing you can do is you can pinch them forward so you can kind of compare and make sure that one side is pretty similar to the other. So now we've got the front legs the same length. And now we'll just trim that back leg, straighten them up a little bit. And that's uh, that's the pink hippie stomper right there. That'll work. That'll work. I like that. All right. Thanks for watching. There's how you tie my pink hippie stomper. Again, you can get that from Umco Feather Merchants. Uh, your local fly shop could line you out with all the materials you need as well. Thanks.